O Christian, if thou wouldst have communion with Christ, the special way to win it is by not defiling thy garments as the church has done. But we must dwell on the rest of the passage. They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. A good old author says there is a reference here to that fact that the rabbis allowed persons to walk in white who could trace their pedigree without a flaw. But if they found any blot on their escutcheon and could not trace their birth up to Abraham, they were not allowed to walk in white on certain days. Well, he says, he thinks the passage means that those who have not defiled their garments will be able to prove their adoption and will walk in white garments as being sure that they are the sons of God. If we would be certain that we are the people of God, we must take care that we have no blots on our dress, for each one of those spatterings of the mire of this earth will cry out and say, Perhaps you are not a child of God. Nothing is such a father of doubts as sin. Sin is the very mother of our distress. He who is covered with sin must not expect to enjoy full assurance. But he who liveth close to his God and keeps his garments unspotted from the world, he shall walk in white, knowing that his adoption is sure. But chiefly we should understand this to refer to justification. They shall walk in white, that is, they shall enjoy a constant sense of their own justification by faith. They shall understand that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to them, that they have a matchless robe which far exceeds what earthly princes wear, that they have been washed and made whiter than snow, and purified and made more clean than wool. Again, it refers to joy and gladness, for white robes were holiday dresses among the Jews. They that have not defiled their garments shall have their faces always bright. They shall understand what Solomon meant when he said, Go thy way. Eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. Let thy garments be always white, for God hath accepted thy works. He who is accepted of God shall wear white garments, being received by the Father, garments of joy and gladness. When so many doubts, so much distress, and misery, and mourning? It is because the church has defiled her garments. They do not hear below walk in white, because they are not worthy. And lastly, it refers to walking in white before the throne of God. Those who have not defiled their garments here shall most certainly walk in white up yonder, where the white-robed hosts sing perpetual hallelujahs to the Most High. If thou hast not defiled thy garments, thou mayest say, I know whom I have believed. And thou mayest cry, when this earthly house of my tabernacle is dissolved, I know I have a mansion of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, not for my works, not by way of merit, but as the reward of grace. If there be joys inconceivable, happiness beyond a dream, bliss which imagination knoweth not, blessedness which even the stretch of desire hath not reached, thou shalt have all these, thou shalt walk in white, for thou art worthy. Christ shall say to thee, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. But what shall be done with such persons as live in the church, but are not of it, having a name to live, but are dead? What shall be done with mere professors who are not possessors? What shall become of those who are only outwardly religious, but inwardly are in the gall of bitterness? We answer as good Calvin did once, They shall walk in black, for they are unworthy. They shall walk in black, the blackness of God's destruction. They shall walk in black, the blackness of hopeless despair. They shall walk in black, the blackness of incomparable anguish. They shall walk in black, the blackness of damnation. They shall walk in black forever, because they were found unworthy. O oh, professors, search yourselves. O oh, ministers, search yourselves. O oh, ye who make a profession of religion now, put your hands within your hearts and search your souls. You live in the sight of a rain-trying God. O oh, try your own reins and search your own hearts. It is not a matter of half importance for which I plead, but a matter of double importance. I beseech you, examine and cross-examine your own souls, and see whether ye be in the path. 
for it will go ill with you if ye shall find at last that ye were in the church, but not of it, that ye make a profession of religion, but it was only a cloak for your hypocrisy. If ye should have entered into his courts below, and be shut out of the courts above. Remember, the higher the pinnacle of profession, the direer your fall of destruction. Beggared kings, exiled princes, crownless emperors are always subjects of pity. Professor, what wilt thou think of thyself when thy robes are taken from thee, when thy crown of profession is taken from thy head, and thou standest the hiss of even vile men, the scoff of blasphemers, the jeer of those who, whatever they were, were not hypocrites, as thou art? They will cry to thee, Art thou become like one of us? Thou, professor, thou high-flying man, art thou become like one of us? And ye will hide your guilty heads in the dark pit of perdition, but all in vain, for you never will be able to avoid that hiss which shall ever greet you. What? Thou, the drunkard whom you told to drink no more, will say, Art thou become like one of us? And the harlot whom you scorned, and the young debauched man whom you warned, will stare you in the face and say, What? You, you who talked of religion, a pretty fellow you were. Art thou become one of us? Oh, I think I hear them saying in hell, Here's a parson come here, here's a deacon, here's a church member, here's a man who has had the sacramental wine within his lips, here's a man that has had the baptismal water on his garments. Ah, take care. There are but a few names in Sardis who shall walk in white. Be ye of that few. May God give you grace that ye be not reprobates, but may be accepted of the Lord in that day. May He give you mercy, that when He severs the chaff from the wheat, you may abide as the good corn, and may not be swept away into unquenchable fire. The Lord in mercy bless this warning, and hear our supplication for Christ's sake. Amen.